Welcome to my channel. This is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up. Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Guru Podcast. I got a special guest, uh, Six Figure Spa Queen. Um, she went from being a waitress for 13 years, now she's making seven plus figures. Um, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. So where you want to start? Where you want to start? You Look, it's a lot. I know. This is a lot, everybody. Okay. So you tell me. I don't know what you want. You want. You want. I, I mean, I, you want from the project. I, I know you what, want. What you I, want? Know, I know you want to knock out the gyms, but I, I want you to give your story too. Just, um, just, just. You can just do like a good ten minutes, and then just start killing with the gyms. And okay. You can do that. Okay. So, hey everybody, I'm your favorite spa chick, Candice Holyfield Parker, widely known as a six-figure spa chick on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Like he said, I was a waitress for 13 years, and I was, um, I was gonna turn 30. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, do I still wanna be a waitress? Do I wanna try to do something else? So I had went to college, I did a cleaning company, I worked at a home loan office, I was doing a lot of stuff, and it just like wasn't my jam. Mm -hmm. And so, um, my job, first of all, if anybody were to work at a restaurant, people be sleeping together at the restaurant. Okay, <laughs> okay, they be sleeping together. Um, so I will always date a cook. I worked there for thirteen. I went through about three cooks, by mm -hmm. the way, through about thirteen years. Um, and so the last cook, when I went, um, I just was doing what I want to do. And so my job was trying to get rid of me anyway because I was doing what I want to do, but they couldn't catch me doing them, so they couldn't get rid of me. Mm -hmm. And so when they took me out of my section, it forced. It forced me to leave that company. Mm -hmm. I'm not making no money, and so that's when I, I was like, I need to learn a skill. At first, I was thinking about, oh, this a bar. If y'all listening, many times you may think you want to get another job. Mm -hmm. I said, let me go learn a skill. Mm -hmm. One of my coaches, her name is Audrea Richmond, and one thing she taught me, she said, you want to have so many skills, you can't go broke. Mm -hmm. And so, and she was my coach when I when I thought about going to get a skill. Um, so I went to massage school, and it just. It was my top three things I ever did in my life is going to massage school, moving to Atlanta, and marrying my husband. Mm -hmm. Those are like the top. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's listening, you should have like your top three best things that you ever did in your life. And so those are my top. And so I went to massage school. I was broke. It was a lot. Who? It was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, but it was one of the best things that I could have ever done in my life going to massage school. And so then I went to massage school. I was doing that. Um, and it's ironic now that it's 2022. And this was, you know, back from 2020 up to 2022. Mm -hmm. At that point, I didn't know I would be a multimillionaire. I didn't know I would be an entrepreneur. Uh, I didn't know I would be a superhero, saving mm -hmm. the girls one spot at a time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I would be any of those um, things. And, but God knew I was going. He he had this life plan for me that I knew nothing about. And so that's why we got to just stay the course. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we're going to do things that don't make sense. My job basically trying to fire me. I would have never went to massage school. I would have kept on working there. And mm. so they they pretty much had to force me out of their position. So if you're li looking and you're listening, you might be in a situation where you're getting forced out because something bigger and greater is coming your way. It might don't make sense right now. Um, but, you know, I'm just a living testimony that what was meant to be bad turned out to be like a big, big blessing and just really changed the game for me. Mm. And, an and another way my life changed, I did go to massage school. Everybody know me, my client of fame was Groupon. I made my first six figures on Groupon. But my other friend, she told me about Instagram. She was like, you got to get on this app. It's called Instagram. And so when I got on Instagram, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, by the way. Mm -hmm. When I got on Instagram, I was able to see people from... When I first got on Instagram, y'all, my favorite Instagram page was OG Nally mm -hmm. from, from New York. That was my favorite page. I went about a fur coat because of her and everything. I was like, I'm talking, I took my whole income tax check. We went to All-Star Game in New York. Mm -hmm. I blew the, This back when I was crazy. <laughs> I blew my whole income tax check. I went to All-Star Game and I bought a fur coat. That's the power of influence. At the time, I wasn't an influence yet. I didn't even, I don't even know if influence was a thing mm -hmm. back then. But I went and bought a fur coat because she was wearing fur coats. And I was going to New York and I knew it was cold. Mm -hmm. um, you already met Miss Skittles or not? 
Oh, I haven't met nobody yet. I was still a regular degla. And you was dating your husband? Yeah, we no, not my current one. This my, I'm current? second time man. Oh, okay. Oh, your second time. I oh, ran I through a couple of dudes, y'all. Okay, <laughs> I ran through a couple of the dudes. Okay. No, this is my second husband. I was with my first husband from the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I think it was my second husband until 2016. 2016. Yeah, so it was four, five. It was a long time later. Mm -hmm. But no, but when I got on Instagram, it changed the game for me. I wanted to be. Oh my gosh. I ain't never told this story. Mm -mm -mm. This is an exclusive. This is an exclusive, everybody. When I got on Instagram, I wanted to be another girl. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be the same regular candies that everybody knew, broke, struggling. I got on Instagram. It allowed me to see. And keep in mind, now Instagram is different. We don't know who's lying, who's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And it don't matter. Mm -hmm. But me getting on Instagram, it allowed me to see how other people was living, what they had. And guess what? I wanted it. Mm -hmm. I wanted it. And so I started working. Um... To have the thing that I desire, and voila, now I have them. So Instagram was like a major game changer for just my whole life and my business. How many followers you had at this time? None. I had just created the page. I didn't have six figure spot chick page yet. I had my my Man. original my original first page was Candice Boutique, mm -hmm. and my coach at that time was Glam University. This was back in the this was I got with Sabrina in like 2015, mm -hmm. um, but I made my page probably in 2000. 12 or something and um she was like you need to change your name from candy's boutique because when i got the page it wasn't a such thing as ig lives one out yet reels one out yet none of that stuff was out yet we just had an instagram page um and so i just came up with candy's boutique my name candy's and so people thought i had a boutique which i did not have a boutique mm -hmm. but i had a spa and she was like change your name but i didn't want to change my name because people knew me as candy's boutique mm -hmm. and i eventually changed it in 2016 for queen of massage atl so that was just my spa page and then I also made Six Figure Spot Chick in 2015. And I just, you know, built that up from 2015 to so what everybody see it is now. You was making money on Groupon though, right? Yeah. So I was doing Groupon. I was making money, a shitload of money. Keep in mind, y'all, I was broke. Mm -hmm. So to get a $30,000 check or from Groupon, um, some of my checks, I was getting like 30 grand for the month. So if I'm, my first check from them was like six grand or eight grand or something mm -hmm. that was the first one i got that in a week in seven days i was i was coming from being a waitress mm -hmm. so to even get a check for eight grand i was like i didn't hit the jackpot like <laughs> let me do this and um and that's what i did i didn't meet skittles and everybody else until i moved to atlanta in 2015. Mm -hmm. that's how i started meeting all those people what made you come to atlanta so I came to Atlanta, I came to an event from Glam University, the girl power sleepover, and then Skittles was at that event. That's mm -hmm. the first time I met Skittles. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of people at that event. Um, and going to that event, it just changed. Keep in mind, I told y'all I was looking at social media and I wanted to be somebody else. And so when I came to the event, I paid my money as a guest, but I ended up doing, the, um, I ended up sponsoring the spa lounge for the event. And so we got to meet all the celebrities. I, I didn't know none of these people. I'm in Memphis. Did you, did you pay for, to get in that event? Yes, it was $600. You know what I'm saying? I was a guest. Do you think that was like your best investment? One of my, one, one of, of my, I have made a lot of good investments. Mm -hmm. That was one of my good, that would be like in one of my top five investments. Top five? Yeah, that, that helped me become a six-figure earner, a multi-six-figure multi earner, um, that event. And then the skills that I just learned from that helped me to become a millionaire. Like, those of you who are listening, Glam University taught me to plan my year out. So now, right now, we sitting in 2022, my whole year is planned out. I don't got to look for no money. I don't got to chase for no money. Like, those are the things she taught me, and that was all the way back in 2015. She was the one who always taught me, read, read, read. I have a book club, everybody. I got so many books. I got more books than I got shoes. Like, those are lifelong things she taught me so I can stay in business and continue uh, pivoting and, and, and making money. Um, So, you meet Miss Skittles, and then... She like drops gems and you, you pay for a course because I don't with Skittles. Mm -hmm. I don't think I paid for a course with Skittles. You 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 like you invested in a lot of mentorship, correct? Yeah. Um. At that time, Skittles didn't have mentorship yet. Mm -hmm. She was doing her boutique. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Skittles like massages. Mm -hmm. So anybody who I saw who liked massages, I would stick to them like glue because at that time that's all I had was my hands to do massage. Mm -hmm. I, my brain went what it is now. Like now I'm a master serial entrepreneur. I, I know how to turn a business from red. I wasn't at the capacity yet in 2015 when I met Skittles. Mm -hmm. But I knew she liked the massages. I knew her husband liked the massages. So I I would always offer free massages to anybody who I know that liked them. And that's how I got good in with Skittles. But she was doing like dinners and stuff at her um, 
boutique. It was like fifty dollars and shit. Mm-hmm. So I just pay fifty dollars, go to a dinner, and so I just kept on showing up over and over and over, and that's how we got a relationship. Mm-hmm. And then when I got like money, money, mm-hmm. the first trip she did, she that was the first person who took me to China. China. I think that China trip, I can't remember how much it cost. It was thousands of dollars though. Um, and then when I went to China, that's when the game exploded for me when I went to China. Can you tell us about the uh, the book play? How you like a bestseller on, on Amazon? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well. My my book play is really not from Amazon. You being on Amazon is give you more credibility, more leverage, and then of course you know when you become a bestseller, you know it give you that accolade, it give you that that title. Um, but my book play actually came from Instagram. Mm-hmm. I wrote over thirty ebooks for spa professionals. That was another six figure business that I have. Um, anything that I know, I put it in an ebook. So most people when they think about a book, they think it got to be three hundred pages long. No. Every skill you okay, if everybody listening, it's a gym. You want to make you some money. You going I do this thing called a skill assessment. And so when I meet people, I say, hey, write down every single skill you got. Anything you good at, anything you can tell somebody to help them write it down. Mm-hmm. And so when people write this stuff down, the list be this long. And you take each thing, you make it an ebook. You only talking about that one niche. So I got ebook on just hashtags by yourself. I got ebooks on just Instagram by yourself. Mm-hmm. I got ebooks on Groupon. Just by yourself. I got ebooks on business credit, Airbnb, how to be your own PR. Uh, y'all know we live in a world where everybody want to have surgery. I wanted to have surgery so bad. And um, I actually paid for my friend and my surgery. It was a lot of money. So I wrote an ebook about that. Like, hey, how did I get all this money? And I didn't have surgery, by the way. It, mm-hmm. Everybody who listened, my friend had it. She looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wrote an ebook about that. Like, how did I get. How did I get 20, 30 grand? How did I just pull it out the mud to pay for some surgery? So I got an ebook about that. So I just, anything I know, I put in an ebook. But it's just niche for that thing. And that's how you guys will create you a full, I call it an ebook library or ebook vault. Mm. You can never go broke. You just open them, open the vault whenever you want to. Like one, like it's surgery season right now. So I could promote my surgery book right now because all the girls that's going to go have surgery, I'm making a shitload of money. Mm. It's just marketing and it's, it's just being strategic. Can you tell us the importance of a bit having business credit? Um, so everybody got different views on business credit. Me personally, I'm a strong believer in business credit. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if people watching are um, like you know, you don't come from money. You don't you don't got all this money to, you know, just put into your business. So that's I call it a security blanket. Mm-hmm. And so another reason why my business did scale to seven figures because I started getting business credit. And so that extra money gave me that wiggle room to, you know, take better pictures, get a better website, hire me a coach, go to different events, get in rooms, meet people. I had the I had the money on my fingertips to do that where I don't gotta decide like, am I gonna go to this event or pay my rent? Mm-hmm. Am I gonna buy some inventory or pay my rent? Hey, my car broke down, am I gonna get my car fixed or pay my rent? Like, that's too stressful. So we need we need to have uh, access to money. So we can do the things that we need to do to not only just better our business, but better our life as well. So I'm a strong believer in business credit. I have a free business credit webinar. You guys can check it out on YouTube. It's on the Six Figure Spot. You get absolutely free. It's fire. You know, I, 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 I strongly believe in it, me personally. Um, you, you, you took your spies to Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I still have my spy in Memphis, too. Why did you decide to move everything to Atlanta? Atlanta. Um, because, so I was on Instagram and I was like, I want to be these girls. I don't, I don't want to be this girl. I don't want this life I got. And so when I went to Atlanta to that event and I was able to meet Skittles, um, who I was there, Shanita Foster was there. Um, it was just, it's, some of everybody was there. And so when I went there, it was, it was a feeling that I felt. It was like a clean slate. Nobody know me. They don't know my bees. They don't know my pads. It was like a clean slate. Everybody there looked it good. They was making money from Instagram, by the way. Easy. Like, if I'm doing massage and shit, that's physical labor. Mm. Um, and I just wanted to be in those environments. I wanted to be around those people. Mm. And I was like, I'm moving to Atlanta. Mm. And so, six months later, I moved to Atlanta. I still had my spa in Memphis, though. I still had it. I uh, What's this month? Smart this is story. March. So, my spa in Memphis, um, my nurse practitioner... Marque- Dr. Marquita Williams just took my spot over in Memphis this month for March. So mm-hmm. I've had a spot since 2010. Can you talk about uh, how the pandemic affected you when you had to cancel all the Chinese trips? <laughs> Look, everybody, the pandemic had me crying for four days, and I'm a real gangster. I don't even be crying like that. When y'all be seeing me, that's how I know I'm getting weak. Mm-hmm. That's how I know I'm turning into now another person because I be crying all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pandemic came, and um, 
And that's when I was doing my own China trips, only for spot professions. I was making crazy, crazy money. And the pandemic came, I had to refund two hundred grand, two hundred thousand dollars. Um, I was sick. And then one of my eighteen wheelers had broke down. I think it was like four thousand dollars to get fixed. It was just a bad week. Mm -hmm. um, that, was all, that was all in one week. Oh, uh, this was like two days apart. The two hundred, the refunds. Um, eighteen wheeler broke down. Um, well, it was why, just why you didn't stop? Stop what? Just stop. You could have just stopped. Shit, I need money. <laughs> stop and do what? Y'all, what am I? Stop. I can't stop. <laughs> Let me tell everybody something. Once you like a real entrepreneur, it's mm. no stopping. Exactly. And another thing, too, if, if people who are listening or watching, once you get a taste of whatever, you want that you want that feeling again. Mm. And it, so you know, it. yeah, making 200 grand a month, 100 grand a month. 30 grand a month, going to China, like, you want to keep on doing them things, so maybe that's why I, shit, I, first of all, what am I stop and do? Mm -hmm. I, I got my business, like, what am I going to stop and do? Like You, you could have just did a trucking for a time, just got some more. No, fuck no. If anybody <laughs> is watching this, <laughs> trucking, you can make a lot of money, but that come with a lot of other headaches and a lot mm -hmm. of other things, so that's the right. money is there, but that's a lot. Mm -hmm. The trucks ain't breaking down, the drivers, the medical cars Dispatch, ain't going dispatches. through. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't there thinking about going to eat on another truck. They never. And not to mention, if anybody is in trucking, the numbers went down significantly in debt mm -hmm. uh, during the time of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So truckers was losing money as well. So mm -hmm. the trucks not going to stop running. But like um, some people who do trucking, they were um, doing boycotting. So they was parking their trucks because the money was not there. It, it cost too much money to have a trucking company. So the money has to be there. So that, that went down as well for some months, even in the trucking industry. So that wasn't even... On the on the mindset to to go get another truck, mm -hmm. it was just like I had to just get my. I cried for four days, uh, and I was like, I got to get myself together. And then I came back, and we just started doing zooms. We started. Doing, I think the first one was like twenty five dollars, thirty dollars. So we were just doing them back to back, back to back, back mm -hmm. to back. I went into my community because all our spas was closed. Mm -hmm. I was like, make hand sanitizer, sell all y'all products, do do virtual consultations. And so I just had to get it together mm -hmm. because if I'm the visionary of black spa. Shit, everybody looking at me like, what we supposed to do? Our spas closed down. A lot of them wasn't heavy with retail sales. So that's another thing, another bar. Your retail business should make the same amount of money or more as your service-based business. So if something happened and you can't use them hands, you got your retail business, is a, it's a separate business. It, it will sustain you if you can't use your hands. So I want to make sure everybody in service-based business like really pay attention to that because it's, it's vital to your survival. How, how important are hashtags? <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. I made a million dollars from hashtags, okay? So I made a million dollars from hashtags. Um, if anybody is watching and, you know, if their goal to monetize, those of you, who, you know, y'all can't see the whole room. So I got one of my millionaires in a building who I helped make a million dollars. Uh, I like to have my social proof with me, you know, in the flesh so they know it's real. Um, but I helped her make her first million dollars from Instagram. I think when she started, she had like two, three hundred followers and she made a million dollars. But the hashtags, now content is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So now the hashtag and the content, like it's all a, a pie. Um, but if you guys can get that, so let me get y'all to play on the hashtags. Can I look at your head? Do you use hashtags? Yeah, I use hashtags. Can I look at yours real quick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, let me say, can I look at yours? So I want to tell y'all what be happening with the hashtags, everybody. So when we look at his, oh shit, this is horrible. Okay. So his hashtag, first of all, y'all, he got a podcast. He do real estate. And he do he's talking about a plumbing and he's talking about a rehab, right? And his hashtag, I want y'all to listen up. Come closer to the camera. Come closer, okay? This is a million dollar play. His hashtag, because and this is a, a lot of other people make this mistake on social media, oh. right? First of all, you guys should not be using those hashtags apps. Okay. It's not hating on them companies. Oh my gosh, I should have said that on. <laughs> oh my gosh, do what y'all want to do. Do what y'all want to do, okay? Um, but when you use those hashtags apps, they're too broad. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you do real estate and you're doing a video talking about a massive rehab and plumbing. Mm -hmm. So, because you're doing it, you think your hashtag should be related to that. Mm -hmm. That's incorrect. Okay. Your hashtag saying plumbing job, plumber tools, plumbing apprentice, plumbing design. Everybody, listen up. This to play. Whatever you posting on social media, it's a matter of who do you want to buy. Mm -hmm. Who do you who you want to buy when you posted this video? What, what who you want to buy? I use 
I use A hashtags. I was told to use A hashtags. Make sure they all different. But no, from this video, what 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 is the objective? I want all the plumbers to, to see this and to like it and to for it to go viral with the plumbers. <laughs> but how how is it gonna help you though? Um, how you gonna make money? I, right, right now, I'm just trying to make more. I'm just trying to get more followers. Right so that means you need engagement. Shout out to Indy Ari. Okay. She's an influencer here in Atlanta. And so when you guys want to get, uh, I'm in, her, I'm in her membership group. And that's another thing too. That's another bar. It don't matter if you already making millions of dollars. It's always room for improvement. I'm in like five memberships. Mm -hmm. Um. And so one thing India taught us one time was you need to get the engagement up. So, okay. so if you want to get more followers, you got to get the engagement up. That's how more people are going to see what you're doing. So, I, my hashtag, I wouldn't have none of these. Just, okay. Look, just click on it. Okay. Click on the hashtag. Yeah. Plumbing business. It's 19,000 people on, on there, on, uh -huh. under this particular hashtag. Uh -huh. 19,000 people. And if you notice, you posted this three days ago, uh -huh. but you only got five likes. Cool. They didn't let nobody see it. Well, hold on, but look, I, I went viral on TikTok, though. No, but it's Instagram. We ain't on TikTok. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a whole other. That's something else. Okay, you're right. You're you right. got TikTok on lock. Do you yeah. want to get Instagram on lock or not? I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You're right. Talk, see, that's what y'all be missing up it. Can we talk about that really quick? <laughs> oh, I went viral on TikTok. That's TikTok. This is Instagram. There's a difference. Let me tell you. Do y'all not know this? Instagram don't even like TikTok. That's true. No, that's, that's their they, competition. They, they beef them. They beef them. They, they, do y'all know that if you want to put your TikTok on Instagram, it should not say TikTok because they ain't going to show it to nobody. Uh -huh. Okay, but back to the hashtags really quick. On the hashtags, your hashtag, number one hashtag to be your signature hashtag. So if you want your hashtag to be real estate hey, guru, guru okay. that's your that's one. Okay. One to three should be your target audience, your industry. So it could be other people who do hashtags. Other people who do real estate. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, I said people who do hashtag. It could be other people who do podcasts. Uh -huh. It could be other people who do real estate. Like, that's your industry. That's your peers. Okay. Because that's going to get you collaborations and opportunities. Okay. So, now we up to four hashtags. Uh -huh. Then you're going to do six to eight. Now we at 10 to, 10 to 13. That should be your target audience. Okay. Who's going to buy. Who's going to buy everybody. And it, so, for instance. It's not a lot of, it's not enough people here, but normally, like your hashtag, mm -hmm. they didn't let nobody see that because you didn't have no engaging with it. Mm -hmm. Can I get, let me tell y'all another part to the hashtag. When you click on it, because all his hashtags say plumbing, mm -hmm. when you click on a hashtag, you click recent. This is the part that nobody don't know. Y'all owe me a million dollars for telling y'all this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to not only use the, when y'all use a hashtag, you're using a hashtag in hopes that your target client gonna find you. Mm -hmm. It ain't enough. The streets too busy, baby. Mm -hmm. These little young folks popping up making a million dollars. My motherfucking forty. It took me thirty some years to make a million dollars. They popping up making it in ten days, cause they smart and they get the engagement, mm -hmm. right? So we, I'm old. I'm forty. How old are you? I'm thirty. About to be thirty-six. Huh? You young? You with the young kids? Um. But I'm motherfucking forty. Okay. <laughs> so this is the part nobody tells us. You gotta click on whatever hashtag that you use. You click on recent and you engage with the target audience. Mm -hmm. The target audience is the people who are going to buy from you. They're gonna like your stuff, they're gonna follow. They might get in your funnel. They might buy some, they might share your post. That's who you wanna be engaging with on social media. Even to this day that I make a, I make a million dollars, I still engage with a hundred accounts every single day. It only takes me 20 minutes to do it. Mm -hmm. So I will come under here. So you wanted plumbers to see their posts. Yes. But Instagram didn't let the plumber see the post. No, they did. So he had to take matters in his own hand because he still needs his money. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come on here under the plumber, all the hashtags he used that nobody saw his shit. Like, okay. Like him. We're going to come on here and we're going to like. Okay. We're going to engage. And if it's something worth me leaving a comment, I'm going to comment. Okay. When you're on Instagram and you're building and somebody leave a comment, you reading it. Oh, what they say? Who is this? Somebody come like five, ten of your posts, you going to see. Oh, they like five or ten of my posts. Who is this? Mm -hmm. You checking for that person. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all want. Make a motherfucker come check for you. Mm -hmm. I ain't on Instagram just to look cute. I want people to come check for me, follow me, engage on my posts, eventually buy something from me. Like, it's a, it's a whole strategy. Mm -hmm. So, these people don't know you exist. They don't know you posted that video. To, there was a video helping them with something. Mm -hmm. So you got to go get in front of the plumbers. If that makes sense. If that was your target audience. But. Just for that one. I, I don't do that on all of them. But. Guess what else you didn't do. 
You did no call to action. You didn't do nothing. What you want the people to do? I want them to. Uh, you didn't tell them. I want them to follow me. You didn't tell them. I didn't. And you didn't tell them why they should follow you. Yeah. You didn't say, hey, if you like this video, follow me to see more. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I see, I see. You didn't say, hey, hit the follow button. Hey, save this post. Hey, tag three plumbers you know. Like, that's the engagement part. Do that make sense? Yeah, that's what you do on live. When you go live. You tell I do it on live. Shit. I do it in the stories. Mm -hmm. I do it everywhere. Okay. In person. I meet people. I'm like, I am meeting the people me. every time. All right. I'll do that. Do that make sense? Yeah. You didn't tell... Even though we are adults, we think that people know that we want that. We think people know that they know that we want them to follow them or buy something. They don't know. Mm -hmm. They're looking at so many posts a day. It's, it's a three second window. It's called, um, it's a book. It's called The Goldfish Room. The Goldfish Rule. A goldfish uh, is the animal with the shortest uh, brain. Mm -hmm. Like mine, it's the a, it's a shortest attention span. Attention span. It's three seconds. So in this book, I can't even remember what book it was, but it's called The Goldfish Rule. Your job is to capture my attention in three seconds. Mm -hmm. So you didn't you you didn't tell me to do that. You gotta give me an action. I will. That's how you get your engagement up. That's how you get your followers up. Okay. Simple. How, how did your how did your mm -hmm. husband help you like in your business? How did he help me? I helped him. The <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Read my real story, everybody. Okay. Um. But uh, how no, he? I mean, I, I I know you said that. He was wanting and dining you, and then um, how 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 I would say my husband then, helped me. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm more loving. Mm -hmm. I'm more um, cause my whole life been my biz. I wanted I wanted the life I saw people lived on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I was working to the core to move in a better neighborhood, get a better car, dress better, get my makeup done. Like I need money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my whole life was, was my whole life for uh, the last 22 years was my business. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I got with my husband, he's very, very. He comes from an amazing, amazing. My family is very dysfunctional, mm -hmm. but he comes from a very, very functional family who are amazing. And so now I'm more family oriented. Um, I'm a better mom. I'm a better wife. I told you I'm getting weak. I cry all the time. Like yeah. he bring the weakness out of me, um, and he loves me so much, and I love him so much. You're able uh, to feel vulnerable. Um, yeah, when I'm with him, I just, I go down to an ant size, mm -hmm. you know, to the world. I'm this big old queen. When I'm with him, I I just did a uh, Facebook post. I said, I'm tired of being strong. Mm -hmm. I'm a feature that my husband be strong for me, you know. So, me helping him um, get the things he wanted, it, it was an investment, mm -hmm. you know. Now he's able to take care of me. My last day working for this year is March 29th. Mm -hmm. I'm off for the whole rest of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so, he's able to take care of me now. Um... He's always loving and compassionate. He really just made me a, a better mom, a family, a better family person, a better daughter. Like that's what he did for me. When it comes to the business, that's that's what my genius is, and so I kind of help when he, on the business side. But why why did you make him wait four years to marry you? Why did I make him wait? Mm -hmm. Um. First of all, everybody, I got a two-year rule. Like if you screwing me and <laughs> you ain't putting no ring on it after two years, you don't want me. Mm -hmm. And you ain't gonna be screwing me for four, five years. You ain't gave me no rent. That's too much. Like, mm -hmm. no, are you gonna marry me or not? Mm -hmm. Um, so we was together, but I was living in Atlanta. He was living in Memphis. We were going back and forth for a long time. And I want to say maybe we was coming up on like three, four years or something like that. And I was like, is you gonna marry me or what? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Cause we had talked about it. Like I, I want to be married. I'm gonna be a husband. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Um, so it wasn't that I made him wait. He had to just get his himself ready for 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 a woman like me. And he wanted to make sure that that he was equal, and he wanted to make. Yeah, one time he tried to break up with me. <laughs> he tried to break up with me one time. He was like, um, he like I he was like I move too fast. You know, I want to do all this big stuff, and I'm like, I do. I, everybody who's listening, I honestly think that we can have anything that our heart desires. Mm -hmm. If we want to travel every day, eat out every like whatever we want. We can have it. Like I honestly think like that, but a lot of people don't think like that. They're they if people only in their neighborhood and their community, that's all they see, that's far as their mind gonna go. Mm -hmm. I got on Instagram, my mind got stretched. And then I started traveling, my mind really got got stretched. I meet a lot of people, I see a lot of things, and so um, yeah, he got to break up with me. He's like, I move too fast, you know, I'm a lot. I'm like, what you saying? Mm -hmm. I've been thugging out with you for two, three years. What what is you saying? Um, so it wasn't that I was making him You was crying? 
No, I was pissed. I wasn't crying. Oh, he was mad. <laughs> I was not crying on that conversation. Um, so it wasn't like making him wait thing. It was just a matter of him getting out himself together to make sure he can be a good husband. Um, and I had been preparing to be a good wife forever. So I was ready. I'm like, I'm ready to be a good wife. So we just did like a pe preparation process. And that's pretty much what happened. That's why it took so long. Because mm -hmm. he was working like for the city. And I was already a six-figure earner. And... You know, he just had to prepare himself to make sure he can be a good husband. So that that's what we that was what was happening during the process. When was like that turn, like when you was like you made it, like shit. When you don't get food stamps, you paying for that motherfucking health insurance. You're paying the IRS. I said, oh, I didn't made it, mm -hmm. baby. So to, to go to the dentist with me and three kids, that's a bill. Mm -hmm. That's when I was like, I got it going on, cause. I'm paying a full dentist bill in cash. You know, my kids get sick, I'm paying in cash. Uh, you know, I'm paying a housekeeper. Um, I've never been like a food stamp type of girl. I know when I first moved to Atlanta, I had got broke. I think I had got food stamps for like six months. It had hurt my soul to go get food stamps. Like, I, I, my mom was always like this independent woman who take care of her kids, you know, work, do her thing. And so, Shit, you like your mama. Mm. And so I always was like this strong, independent person. So when I had to go get food stamps, I cried like a baby. I'm like, I got to go get food stamps. Mm -hmm. like, I, I cannot feed my children. Mm -hmm. Nobody, the baby daddies ain't helping. Nobody I know ain't got no money. I cannot feed my kids. I had to go get food stamps. They didn't have a job? Who? Your the baby, baby dad? Yeah, yeah, them tricks had a job. <laughs> they wasn't studying us. <laughs> They want not stun us, so I had to get my shit together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so I had to get the food stamps when I was in Atlanta, and I had the food stamps for about six months. My renewal came. Anybody who get food stamps, you don't got to renew them food stamps. Mm -hmm. um, so when my renewal came, I was like, I ain't renewing these food stamps. I was like, I got to go out and do what I got to do, because I ain't renewing these food stamps. And, man, I just went ham. I was at the event. At the event, I was giving away free services. I was on Instagram every day. I was under my target client. Hashtag every day until somebody booked me, like, I was just like going, um, cause I couldn't, I, I couldn't feed my kids, so they hurt my soul to go get them food something. So when I got to that point, when I, you know another, not not to say I made it, but a shift in my business, then I had more money than I had bills. Mm -hmm. So I, I I hadn't made it yet, but I had I was able to pay my bills, Same feed my savings. <laughs> um, cause made. keep in mind we had been broke for so long. Yeah, so you had to catch up. You got to catch up. Mm -hmm. Shit, your kids need stuff. You need stuff. You want to get new websites. Like, that money be good. That's why I tell everybody, when you first get money, or like, like right now, we in income tax season. And mm -hmm. so you will hear other people who bigger up, they just forget. They be like, how you run through $6,000? Girl, there ain't no money. Mm -hmm. People ain't had no money all year. So if they get their income tax, they got to catch up for everything they haven't had all year. That's why their income tax be gone in a month. But other people be like... How they blow through the money? Shit, easy. Girl, I've been broke all year waiting on my taxes. So, look, if, if you say you, you're getting your income tax tax right now, say you're getting $5,000, $6,000. Mm -hmm. One girl told me she's getting twenty. Whoop. She was like, Kendall, what do I need to do with it? I said, shit. <laughs> That's what I say. What, 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 would you do? what would you do with the $6,000 starting off? What would you do right now? Yeah, um, if, if it was me, um, I'm going to definitely have something, um, you know, passive or residual. So, you know, maybe I might join a network marketing company and set that up or... uh what about Airbnb, no? Well, you can't do Airbnb with six grand. What about a furniture and sublease it? Uh, no. Not with six grand. Mm. Where are you going to do that at? What kind of Airbnb is that going to be? I mean, I, I, you get a rules to go credit card, Sam's credit card. So, everybody... Charge you. Here's another bar. Sorry to be the barrier of bad news, everybody. So, the Airbnb guru, gurus on the Instagram, they have just fooled everybody. Sorry to be the... I've been a super host on Airbnb since 2018, so I mean, they're fooling everybody. Like, we see everybody like, oh, I got all this money, I got this many herb. that shit is a headache. Let's be clear. It is. And it costs a lot of money. It does. It costs a lot of money. If you're going to compete with the other people who are on Airbnb, if their Airbnb is Instagram worthy and yours is not, they're going to pick that one over yours. Mm -hmm. You got to have, you got to have money. Like, we living in a real content day and age, and your shit got to look good to... To compete. Stand up. And I know people be saying, ain't, ain't no such thing as competition. That's a lie. I don't know who fooled y'all on that. It is very much so, such a thing as competition. So if your Airbnb regular and the girl next to you Airbnb, you know, got pink walls, and you ain't going to get no bookings. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you can't do Airbnb for six grand, but 
it might be a minimal Airbnb to where you can't compete how you want how you want to compete with your other people. If they, like my Airbnb, I had a green one, I had a pink one. The pink one, anybody on here, you want to make some money with Airbnb? Do it pink. So, so Zo taking everybody. It's gonna, it's gonna. I, I bought them two Airbnbs from Zoe. Oh, you did? But when I bought them, they weren't colored enough. We asked him to color them. That was that was some years ago. But the pink Airbnb, the green one stayed booked too just because I got a community. But the pink one booked every day. So that's a bar. If anybody want to do anything on Airbnb and you want to make sure it's booked, you make some money, do pink. I don't know why the girls go crazy over pink. They do. But the girls just go crazy over pink. So I will put some pink stuff in there. So if you only got six grand, um... And another reason I wouldn't say do Airbnb if I only got six grand, because your return on investment takes too long. Mm -hmm. What I will say, well, six grand can't get you no truck either. Um, but your money back on trucking is fast. Mm -hmm. Like, you can get your truck, get your authority, be ready to go. Shit, 30 days, you done made 40000 mm -hmm. So, the trucking, it's a lot of money up front, but it's a fast return back. So, anybody who's listening, if you do get some taxes, think about, hey, how fast am I going to get this money back? How long will it take me to see a return on investment on my money? And see if you can wait, you know, three months, six months, nine months, if you want to do Airbnb to get your return, or do you want to do something with a with a faster return? So that's what I would do. Who had, who had a bigger influence on you, uh, B Simone or, or her skittles? Um, actually, you know, B Simone was building up her um Climb her up. platform. Yep, and you probably asked me about that because I did another interview and I was telling everybody that during COVID when it first hit, when I lost the two hundred thousand, and when I cried for four days. Mm -hmm. B. Simone was on her journey to having a million dollars in her bank account. And she was just promoting every day her lip gloss. And people was buying that shit. I'm like, I sell information. Mm -hmm. I better get back to work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so B. Simone was the person who, like, and we didn't talk personally. Like, we've been on trips together and stuff through Skittles and things like that. But we never had a personal conversation during that time. But me just seeing her on social media selling that lipstick every single day and people was buying it. I'm like, girl, get it together. Mm -hmm. And I pop back up with my Zoom courses and things like that. Um, so some of my biggest people who helped me grow to what everybody see today would be, of course, the Glam University, Miss Skittles, um, Audrey Richmond, Donnell Winningham, uh, Coriel. I always shout out Coriel. I wanted to be, I wanted to be like Coriel um, so bad. She interviewed me too. She's super dope. Um, those are people who really played a big part. And oh, Christy, Women CEO Project, like she the one who taught me how to be a CEO. Like a lot of people, anybody can have a business, but you're not a CEO because mm -hmm. you're still heavily working and you're not you're not delegating. Mm -hmm. So now all I do is delegate. But that took me years to be able to delegate. Whew, a long time. I got it now, though. You got any uh, relatives working for you? Relatives? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, no. We tried that. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. I fired my mom three times. So. <laughs> None of my relatives work for me. Now, I will say, um, like right now, I'm here in Houston. Um, so, between my daughter and my mom, that's who, like, keep my kids when I'm away. I pay them $1,000 a week. They keep my kids. So, I guess you can say they work for me on, mm -hmm. on that aspect, but not in none of my businesses. We tried that before. It, it didn't work out. Would you have any problem? Would you have, if your, if your kids decided to go to college and have a job, would you have a problem with that? Oh, of course not. They're not, they're not going to do that. But <laughs> if they wanted to do that, I got them. <clears throat> it's another thing too. Another bar really quick. Most people who run their business, you ain't gave your blueprint to nobody. You doing all this podcast stuff. I'm doing all this spa stuff. Somebody gotta have my blueprint so so it can live on. After, like me doing the only black spot expo, the only black spot where that stuff gonna live on years after after I'm dead. So somebody gotta know how to keep that going if something happened to me. Um, so. I don't think my kids gonna go to college if they do. Like I'm gonna support my kids in any single thing. Like my daughter only twenty, she's never had a job. Mm -hmm. So if they do wanna do that though, I'm gonna definitely one hundred percent like pay for it in full and so they will not have student loans, everybody. If you're listening, those student loans start your kids off with mm -hmm. that. Um so they definitely will not have no student loans whatsoever. I I pay for it if that's what they wanna do. Okay. You got any any more bars you want to throw out there? Look, I can do bars for days. What y'all want to do? What do? Um, I would tell you guys, if you want to do like an ebook, everybody should have a uh, digital library. I just the pandemic taught us a lot. Um, so those of you who be like, well, I don't know how to write an ebook. I don't know how to start. Um, shout out to my girl Dion. Her Instagram is Dion Mink Mania. Is it Dion Mink Mania Co. or Dion Mink Mania LLC? Um, she got this bomb ebook course. It's only fifty dollars. And then you guys can go over to uh, Etsy. They gonna ha let me tell y'all something. Y'all be y'all be sleeping on Etsy. 
Etsy gonna have every template that you oh so Dion Page is Mink Mania Lash Co. She got a bomb bomb like uh ebook training class. Mm -hmm. But that's I think hers is forty nine dollars. But you guys are, don't sleep on Etsy. You can go over to Etsy, they gonna have all of your contracts you need for brand ambassadors, influencers, your ebook templates to write your ebook, you just buy it and you plug in your information and it's already done for you, just make it easier. Mm -hmm. Um, Etsy gonna have it, so don't sleep on Etsy. Also, everybody should go to Law Depot, L A W D E P O T, and write like it's gonna be Q2. I don't know when it's gonna air. I'm saying all the dates. I'm doing Monday. Oh, okay, look, I'm saying all the dates, but it's about to be Q2. You need to have a full outline for Q2. Don't be winging it. Don't be talking about, oh, I'm writing it down in my notebook. If you guys go to Law Depot, it's a free website. Um, and it, you can get the uh, well, they got paid stuff too, but you can get it free and you can like plan out and they um. When you go to the business plan template, it's plug and play. So I want you guys to go there because I want you to I want you to measure your business and see am I really ready for what I think I want? Because mm -hmm. most people are not ready. So when we did this exercise probably three four years ago, most of the girls couldn't fill out everything because they wasn't the business not trademarked. They don't know this. They don't know their profit margins. So I would tell people to go to Law Depot, plan out your entire Q2. It's it's free. Um, so you can see it on paper, you can print it out and actually just see it and it's not just scribbled in, in a notebook. And what I like about the Law Depot or just a business plan in general, that's your blueprint to your success. You got to say, hey, whatever I did in Q1 and I'm just making it up. Let's say Q1 you made, you made 10 grand every month. You made 30 grand for Q1. What do you want to happen for Q2? You don't, you don't want to make another 10 grand. That's the same thing you did in Q1. Challenge yourself. Hey, I want to make okay Q2. I want to make fifteen thousand dollars every month. This is how you guys start scaling your business. That you give yourself these goals. You got to sit down and plan every single thing out so it can make sense for 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 the business. Okay. And another thing too, if anybody is doing um, and I don't have to just be Instagram. It could be TikTok or whatever. Um, the top three uh trends for Instagram is going to be uh, lifestyle, community, or results driven. So when you guys are trying to plan out your content, think about those three. Hey, do I want to do uh, results driven where I'm showing my results? Like if, if I'm a, a business coach, I got one of my million dollar success stories here with me. That's results. If I want to do community work, uh, this month we're honoring four women and we're giving away uh, four weeks of prizes. That's community service work because no purchase is required. Mm -hmm. And then I can do lifestyle. Hey, I'm here in Houston. I might go down to the turkey leg hood and have a big old turkey leg. Like that's lifestyle. Or if I'm doing my self care, or I'm about to go to Africa uh, next week. That when I go to Africa, that's gonna be our lifestyle pictures. So I do all three in my brain, but my brain wasn't always like that. So those of you who be saying I don't know what to post, I don't know what to start. Think about those three things, results driven, community, and lifestyle. So you can do all three, or my old brand, just with my spa, it was on results driven. It mm -hmm. wasn't none of the other stuff yet. Um, but now that I'm more so on the coaching side, I do all three. So I do, I show my results from my clients. I do a lot of community service work, give back, and I do a lot of lifestyle too, because I do, you know, I do do a lot of travel and I go a lot of places and things like that. So think about that, y'all, when it comes to making your content. I hope that it make it easier for you to think about what you what you want to create and what you want to put out to the marketplace. Okay, cool. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask you an either or question. Okay. And then we're gonna be done. Okay. Uh, rent a property or Airbnb. What do you mean rent a property like a landlord? Yeah, yes, man. Airbnb. All right. Commercial building a house. Commercial. Uh, money or equity? Hmm. Probably equity. I would only take equity because I already got money. <laughs> if I didn't have no money, I would say give me the money. Okay. <laughs> Two million followers on a rental property. And fucking rental property. Fuck them two million followers. Especially if they ain't buying shit and they ghost followers and they made up followers. Hell no. <laughs> uh, 850 credit score or a million dollars? 850 credit score. The 850 credit score worth a million dollars anyway. Or I really could take the million dollars. Hmm. Okay. Million. Let me run that one back. I don't need the 850 credit score because a million dollars I can give me an 850 credit score. Mm. So a million dollars on that one. Okay, cool. Uh, Miss Skittles or Coach Stormy? Oh, fuck. You gonna do me like that? Damn, that's tough. I gotta pass on them. Them, them two of the goats. Okay. I can't even pick on that one. All right. That that'll create a war. Shout out to Coach Stormy. Shout out to I used to do Coach Stormy massages for free. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm a millionaire. I don't do massages no more. Follow y'all dreams, people. Ash Cash or David Shane? Fuck you gonna no not that. That's another war. <laughs> Shout out to Ash Cash. I was on his show. Uh, David. I got my email. I need my date. I can't. I can't pick them either. I need both of them in my life. All right. Zoda Goda, Ash Cash. 
I need both of them in my life. <laughs> Atlanta Hair Doctor or Stay Ready Nail Studio. Really? So, shout out to Atlanta Hair Doctor's sister. But you know, Stay Ready Nail Studio is one of my Spa Boss tribe members. She's in the Spa Hall of Fame. So, but they want to pick Stay Ready Nail Studio. I see. Okay. Uh, Natalie Nicole or Ronnie Brown? So, shout out to Natalie, another multi-millionaire. She's very, very amazing. Uh, but I love, love Ronnie Brown. Yeah. I love Ronnie Brown. Neo, CEO, Maddie J. Um, I normally I would say CEO Maddie J, but Neo was just in my DM, so I'm gonna go with Neo. Uh, Maddie wasn't in my DM, but Neo was. Alexis Coin or Andre Wilson? Who is Andre Wilson? Okay. Who is it? Oh, no, who is it? Nah, I heard you talking about her. But we, we, we keep moving. Her name Andrea Wilson? Yeah, Andrea Wilson. What she do? I, um, I don't know. Okay. Alexis Coin. We gonna find out who Andrea is though. Uh, Yo Gotti or Drake? Huh? Yo Gotti. He from the hometown Memphis. CMG3. Period. Pop Smoke or Meg Stay? Meg. I don't know Pop like that. So I go with Meg. Clubhouse or Instagram? Instagram. Chrisette Michelle. Chrisette Michelle. Be some more. Ah, that's tough. I will only, everybody know I love B. Simone. I will only say, uh, and I love, I've grown to love Chrisette. She was a speaker at my event in December. Um, and she, and she was just so, such a beautiful vibe. And, man, it was fire. That was one of my best events that I did in December. So, that's a tough one, too. That's, I don't want to pick because I, I need both of them. I might, you know, I might hit both of them up like, hey, can y'all speak? Can y'all do this? Okay. Then they're going to come to this video and be like, nope. Okay. Nia Ray or Super Saiyan? Oh fuck, that's a hard one too. Um, everybody know I love Super, um, but right now I'm, I'm vibing with, with Mia. I just ordered her new bag. She just did a, I think she did a new drop for like Valentine or something. Mm -hmm. I, I like both of them a lot. If I had to pick though, I would just say Mia, right? But uh, I like both of them. Trucking or spa? Spa. I'm only in trucking y'all because of my husband. I only know trucking because the company has to make money, so I had to learn trucking. But spa is like, that's my jam. I can do that with my eyes closed. That's my passion. Atlanta or Memphis? I would have never became a millionaire in Memphis. Atlanta for sure. Groupon or PayPal? Fucking PayPal! Shout out to Groupon though. I did make my first six figures from Groupon. Saying, you, you made all, you, they gave you the loan and all that. No, PayPal gave me the loan, not yeah, Groupon. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm, we want to shout out Groupon now. Edify Groupon because they put your girl on the map. But the the, the way I just really yeah PayPal gave me like almost yeah. half a million dollars. Oh, I thought you picked Groupon, my bad. Oh, okay. No, I'm just edifying them. Like I just wanted to show my respect to them. <laughs> but PayPal the one who gave me that half a meal that I flipped into over three million dollars. Okay. Oh, uh, we gonna go with books real quick. Oh yeah, that's my favorite. Um, super fans, Pat Pat Flynn. Flynn, yeah, that's my fa that's one of my favorite books. Or hundredemails.com. No. Pat Flynn. Super Pat Fans Flynn. is one of my... Everybody who's listening, you should go get that book called Super Fans by Pat Flynn. Mm -hmm. Everybody should... If anybody is an entrepreneur in a business space, have that book in your library. It is going to be... Do you know, I, I didn't used to tell people the name of that book. Why? Because it was like my hidden secret. Oh, for real? I wouldn't tell them. People were wondering how I was doing. I would not give that book. It mm -hmm. was my hidden secret. And now, you know, I got a lot of more books now. But so now I, I openly give it. But everybody should have y'all, it's a game changer, super fans. Everybody should have that book. Big, big game changer. Tell me for Tita, shut up and listen or emotional intelligence two point Oh shit. You know Tillman is my favorite billionaire in the world, but I would have to go with emotional intelligence because we have to understand customer service is big as our brand grow. We we gotta know how to respond and mm -hmm. you know, being able to control yourself, that's power. So I would definitely say emotional intelligence. And I actually know about emotional intelligence from Coast Stormy. Oh for real. Mm hmm She talk about that a lot. We need emotional intelligence, we're gonna do business on the Instagram. I don't know about TikTok. Do you need emotional intelligence on TikTok? No, not really. They, uh -huh. they be dancing a lot. You need emotional intelligence, you're gonna do business on Instagram. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely say emotional intelligence. Thank you so much for coming out. Appreciate you. Thank you. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. I loved it.